Hey everyone, today I am going to teach you how to set up Sendy on your own web hosting service and then set up Amazon SES to be able to send out bulk emails through Sendy. So what is Sendy? Well, Sendy is simply put a newsletter emailing system. So right now you might be using something like MailChimp or Campaign Monitor to be able to create campaigns send them to your subscribers and then track what happens with those emails. Well, Sendy is pretty much the same thing. However, you only have to buy the license for Sendy and then install it on your web hosting service. So it's a one-time fee and then you only pay when you send e emails. And the beauty of Sendy is that it uses a service called Amazon SES. Now, what is Amazon SES? Well, it's a service from Amazon Web Services and it allows you to send out emails very, very cheaply. So you're gonna be sending out bulk emails very, very cheaply, um, and it saves you tons of money. So let's compare it. Right now, if you were to send out 20,000 emails through MailChimp, the website is saying that you'd be paying roughly around $400, or Campaign Monitor, $200, or Amazon SES, $2. So you can see how much money you can save it is a bit of a manual work to get Sendy up and running properly. However, it's definitely worth it, especially if you have tons of subscribers that you need to email. Um, so in this video, I am going to show you how to set up Sendy on your web hosting service. And I'm also gonna show you how to sign up for Amazon SES and get it working properly. So let's get started. To purchase Sendy, it's quite simple. You just go on the Sendy website, you click on get your copy, and you type in your name, and your email, and then you type in your domain name. So in this instance, I'm gonna be using webexpert.com.au, which is just one of my little domains that I uh, test with. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pay with Stripe and click on buy Sendy now. You can obviously pay with PayPal as well if you'd like. So then you just need to type in your details and then your card number, and then just click to pay. Once the payment has been successfully processed, you will receive an email to the email that you registered Sendy with, with a license key, which we can then use on our installation of Sendy on your web hosting service. To use Sendy, you need to install it on a PHP-based server. So a lot of the shared web hosting online is PHP-based, so just make sure when you are looking for a web host that they do have PHP, and usually those are Linux servers that do that. And to make it even easier, if they have cPanel as their control panel, it will be much easier for you to install Sendy so you don't have to use FTP or anything like that. So as you can see, I am on the cPanel for my webexpert.com.au domain name and I'm going to log into it and set up Sendy. So we're on the cPanel dashboard right now and the first thing we want to do is we want to create a database. So the database is used by Sendy to be able to store campaigns, store the statistics associated with the emails that you send, and obviously your subscriber lists and all of that. So it's, it's very reliant on your database. So the first thing you wanna do is set up a database. So let's call that Sendy. So the database is called webexpert underscore Sendy. And then you wanna create a user. So I'm just gonna call it admin and just generate a password for the database and click on create user. So now we have a user and a database and we just need to make sure that that user can access that database. So if you select the user and the database, click on add, make sure that the user has all the privileges and click on make changes. Great, so we've successfully set up a database, a user and assigned that user to be able to use that database. What you need to do now is go and check your email, the email which you registered with Sendy, so that you can download the copy of Sendy. On the email that you receive from Sendy, you should receive a license key and a download link. Just click on that download link and it will download a zip file onto your computer. Once you've downloaded the file, go into your file manager in control panel and go into public HTML and Sendy and then we want to click on upload. We then want to select the file, which is the sendy.zip file from our downloads folder or off your desktop, wherever you'd like to, and then upload it. 
Now that Sendy is installed or uploaded, sorry, you just need to go back to your file manager and click on reload. And it might take a second or two to actually come up in there. So just keep on clicking reload until the file actually appears. As you can see, it's now come up here. So what you want to do is just right click on Sendy, click on extract, and then click on extract files. And that's going to extract the Sendy installation files into the subdomain uh, root directory. I'm going to delete the Sendy installation file now, and then I'm going to go into this Sendy folder, copy everything in there. What you can do is you can click on the first file, keep your finger on the shift button, or you can just click on select all and then right click on one of the files, click on move and then just take away this sendy folder here and then click on move files. And that's actually going to move them all to the root directory and then you can delete the sendy directory. Okay, so now that we have Sendy's files installed, we should be able to access them by visiting sendy.webexpert.com.au. Great. So as you can see now, Sendy is telling me that it can't connect to the database. So we do need to edit some files in the Sendy installation so that it knows to connect to that specific database that we set up earlier. If you go back into your file manager and into the Sendy installation, you want to click on the Includes folder and then you want to click on config.php. Now right click on config.php and go to edit and then edit again. And this is where we actually have to type in our MySQL or our database details. So our host name is usually going to be localhost. Uh, so that is probably the default. Then you want to type in your username, which is the web expert underscore admin. Then your password and then the database name, which is Web Expert Cindy in my case. And then just click on Save Changes. You'll then notice if you go to cindy.webexpert.com.au or cindy.whatever your domain is.com.au, just click on Refresh. And it should now come up with, it should actually work, but it's actually saying there's another issue, which is app path not set. So go back to config.php and we need to change our app path here. So let's change it to http sendy.webexpert.com.au. We'll hit save changes. And then if we hit refresh again, everything should be good to start working. As you can see on the left hand side, we have all green lights here. So depending on your server setup, uh, you may have some issues here. You might want to check uh, with your web host if you do have some that are red because it is sometimes your web host that controls these sort of things. But as you can see, we're all green here, so we're ready to go. The first thing you need to fill out when you're installing Sendy is the license key. So just refer back to your email from Sendy and it should have a copy of your license key which you can type in. You can then type in your company and your name and your email address and then a password Choose your time zone because that will help with reports so you know that what time people are opening up the emails that you send to them. And then you need to put in your AWS access key ID and secret access key. Let's not put that in right now and let's, uh, let's just set up Sendy and then we will go through how to set up AWS shortly. So click on install now and you will notice that an error comes up on my screen which says 404 net found which is a bit strange. If you do have any error like this, it's most likely to do with your HT access file. So if you go back to cPanel and then you go to settings and you show hidden files, you should see an HT access file there. And if you edit it, it will show you uh, your HT access information. So uh, Sendy actually has some setup already. And if you go into your zip file, you should see that there is an HT access file there. So this means my server has automatically overwritten this. What you need to do is you need to actually grab the stuff from this file and you can paste it into here and hit save. Once you've pasted it, it should start working as normal. Just be sure not to edit any of the existing stuff in there because that is your server that's doing that. 
Okay, so now as you can see, we are at the login page of Sendy. So let's log in if we can remember what our details were. Okay, as you can see, Sendy is set up. However, we do need to do some extra configuration so Sendy can actually send emails. So to do that, you want to go to Amazon SES quota section here and click on settings. This is where we actually have to type in uh, Amazon information so that Sendy can communicate with Amazon and send out the emails for us. Let's now switch over to Amazon. So let's go to Amazon Web Services in Google and go to the AWS main website. And on the right hand side here, you should see create an AWS account. So click on that. And it's going to ask you a bunch of questions. So let's firstly type in our email address. Now I already have an AWS, AWS account on my email that I was using with Sendy. So I'm just going to have to use a different email address. I'm just going to make it accounts at webexpert.com.au. And I'm just going to type in a password, confirm the password and just put a, a, an account name. You can choose whatever you'd like and hit continue. Amazon does need a bit more information as well when you're setting up the account. So we'll just put in the uh, company details. If you have a company, you don't, you can make it personal if you'd like to as well. Put your country and region, put your PO box or your address if you'd like. And just agree with their statement and create your account. Once you've created the account, it is going to ask you for a credit card details or credit card number, which uh, you need to provide them with because when you do start sending out emails through Amazon SES, it is going to charge your card. However, um, as mentioned at the start of this tutorial, it probably won't be that much unless you're sending out millions and millions of emails. So fill out your credit card details and then click on secure submit. So the payment uh, has been, or their credit card details have been saved and then it asks to confirm your identity. So I'm just gonna put in my mobile number to get a phone call. Um, so we'll just do that. And then we just have to fill out this little capture. And I'm just waiting here with my mobile now, waiting for an SMS from Amazon. Great, so I've just got it and I'm gonna verify the code. Fantastic, so my verification has been accepted and I'm going to choose the basic plan with Amazon. That is so you don't have to pay any extra fees for support or anything like that. And now we have our own Amazon account. So what we want to do is we want to click in, click on sign into the console. And then we want to type in our details, which uh, is the details you signed up with. And once you've signed in, it will take you to the console dashboard for Amazon Web Services. Once you come to the dashboard, you want to do a search for SES which stands for Simple Email Service. And when you've found it, click on it and it will take you to the SES page. It actually doesn't support all regions, which doesn't really matter because when you're sending an email, it's gonna send it from wherever as long as your recipients get the email. So what I usually do is just choose the closest to me. And I believe that uh, Oregon is closest to Sydney, Australia because it, I believe Oregon is on the west coast of the United States. So we will just click on US West Oregon. And once that's accepted, we firstly need to set up our domain in SES. So to set up a domain, we have to verify the domain so that we, we can tell Amazon that we own that domain. And then that will allow us to actually send emails. So click on verify a new domain, type in your domain name, and then click on generate DKIM settings as well, and click on verify. Now, when you click on verify, it's gonna give you a couple of records that you need to add into your domain settings, uh, your DNS zone settings, in order for the domain to be verified through Amazon. So what you wanna do is you want to go into your cPanel um, and go to the main page and then click on zone editor. 
Once you're in zone editor, find your domain, click on manage. And then what you want to do is you want to add a few records. So let's go in and add these records. We want to add in a text record with this value for underscore Amazon SES. So let's just go add record text underscore Amazon SES and then put in the text record there. We then want to add in three C names. So let's just copy this and go C name, paste it in and then paste in the value as well. Then do the same thing with this second one. And then the third one. Great, so we've set up the uh, details that have been provided to us to verify our domain. So we can now click close and behind the scenes, Amazon will be checking every minute or so to see if it has been verified. So what you can do is you can click on refresh up here and just keep on clicking on refresh. And as you can see already, it's been verified and it's enabled for sending. Uh, sending. So great, we can now send emails through webexpert.com.au. The only thing we need to do now is we need to set up Sendy with the details, with our Amazon SES details. And we also need to apply with Amazon to allow us to send more than the minimum amount of emails that you can send, which I believe is only 200. So we need to apply, give them a use case and tell them what we're going to do with it. And then usually if, uh, if they're okay with it, they will approve it. And then we can send sometimes up to 50,000 emails a day or more, depending on how much you request. We now need to set up the credentials in Sendy. So to do that, we need to go back into our Amazon dashboard, click on services and type in IAM. So IAM and what should happen is when you search, oh, for some reason it's not working. So let me just try that again. All right, I'm just gonna refresh that page. And let's try and do another search for IAM. Okay, good. IAM comes up now underneath and just click on that. And this will allow us to create a user. So once the page loads, you want to go to users and you want to click on add user. Now you can just call it Sendy so that you know that it's uh, this user is being used for Sendy. Click on programmatic access and click on next. You then want to give yourself uh, that user policies. So first policy you want to find is Amazon SES, SES full access. And then you want to find Amazon SNS full access, which is that one there. Now that those two policies have been attached, click on next, click on next again, and click on create user. Now, once you've created the user, you will get a, an access key ID and a secret access key. We need to get both of these to put into Sendy. So let's grab the access key ID, go into Sendy and click on the Amazon Web Services credentials and paste that key in there. And then go and get the key, copy that and paste it into there as well for uh, into the secret access key section. Then you want to hit save. What will happen is Sendy is going to connect to Amazon and it's going to get the details of your account. And as you can see, it's set up now, but we're in sandbox mode. As I mentioned before, we need to raise our sending limits. We need to send an email to Amazon, giving them our use case so that they accept us to increase our quota. To do that, just click on this raise your SES sending limits link here. It will take you to a new page which will allow us to send an email to the support of AWS requesting uh, our limits to be upgraded. So as you can see, this has already been pre-filled for us, the sending limits uh, limit type. If we go down, we want to type, uh, just search, uh, maybe, maybe change it to subscription. You can keep it marketing as well, but subscription is good. Um, you can put HTTP, webexpert.com.au or put obviously put the URL that is associated with your Sendy installation. Um, and then you want to, it asks you, my email sending complies with AWS terms. Yes. I only send recipients who specifically requested my email. Yes. I have process 
to handle bounces and complaints. Absolutely. Sendy has uh, the ability for people to unsubscribe automatically, which is fantastic. Then we want to choose the region. So we're going to choose Oregon and let's choose our limit. So let's just uh, either choose a daily sending quota, which you, depending on how much you want to send per day, or just do a maximum send rate. Um, and I'm going to make it daily sending quota and I'm going to ask for 50,000 emails per day. You can obviously choose more, but if you choose more, they might scrutinize your application a bit further. Then it says use case description. So this is where you have to explain to Amazon that you're going to be responsible when sending out emails. You need to make sure that you describe what you're going to be using it for exactly. Um, and, and obviously let them know that you, you, you don't intend to use this for anything but uh, your mailing campaign. So I'm just going to write, uh, Dear Amazon Support, I wish to apply for a sending limit increase uh, for my uh, account so that I can use my uh, account to send emails to my subscribers of my mailing list or to subscribers of my mailing list. All of my subscribers have opted in and have provided me with, uh, what word can we use? Uh, consent to send emails to them from time to time. We are uh, all of the emails we send to our subscribers have uh, give, give the subscribers the ability to opt out whenever they choose as well as reply with any complaints they may have. Maybe just finish it off with uh, thank you for your consideration. Warm regards and then just put your name maybe. Uh, contact options, just uh, yeah, English in web. Yeah, that's fine and just hit submit. So now what we do is we play the waiting game. So just let's wait for Amazon to get back to us and then we can complete this tutorial. So it's been about 18 hours since uh, we sent the email to Amazon and I still have not heard back from them. So I will continue configuring Sendy until we hear back from them. Um, so we're back on the dashboard of the Sendy installation and on the left hand side, you'll notice that this SES region is actually North Virginia. Uh, at the start of this video, it was actually Oregon, or I mentioned Oregon. And we also verified the domain for sending through SES in Oregon. So I made a small mistake. If you go back into your settings of Sendy, you just need to make sure that you set the region to be the correct one. So I've got Oregon there and I'm going to save that now. And Oregon is there now. Okay, great. So if we go back to the dashboard again, you can do that just by clicking on the logo at the top here you can add your first brand. So your first brand would be obviously, uh, oh, sorry, your brand is obviously uh, the name of the business that you're gonna be sending emails from. And the beauty of Sendy is you can add many brands. So if you have a, a couple of businesses or if you're managing uh, emails for uh, other businesses, you can do it all through one dashboard, which is fantastic. So let's add the first brand. And I'm just gonna call it Web Expert and Sean Freitas, and I'll put any email at the web expert domain name. So as you can see on SES, remember we verified the domain name. So you can just use anything. So let's just, I'm just gonna do Sean at webexpert.com.au. And you'll notice that Sandy goes and checks if you can actually send from that email. And as you can see, it's verified because we verified it there. You may get an error. So let's just try it. If we change it, it's actually going to check and you'll notice it will tell you that it's unverified. So that would mean that you haven't been verified here or you've got the domain name wrong or something like that. You can also add your brand logo. So maybe the logo of your business. You can just upload that there. Uh, you can use custom domains. Now, uh, custom domains is more if uh, you wanted to cloak the, the domain name that you were using with Sendy. 
uh, and also the unsubscribe links and all that sort of stuff in the email that when it's sent, it actually doesn't use your sendy address, it uses the custom domain. So using a custom domain would be beneficial for someone who's managing multiple clients uh, on their sendy dashboard and they don't want to be sending out emails from their domain name, they want it to be uh, branded to their customer's domain name. So that can come in handy. However, it does cost a bit more. I believe it's about $12 US per uh, domain one-time fee. So you always have that option. You can um, set up your G, uh, general data protection regulation um, settings. Uh, that's, uh, I believe it's only applicable in Europe. Uh, you can set up Google um, recapture and that's for subscription forms. But uh, if you're not gonna use a subscription form, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, here you can put SMTP settings. So if you don't use Amazon SES, you can actually use any other provider as well if you wanted to. And um, then there's just some mis miscellaneous settings here. Um, I won't go too, too in depth with that. So once we do that, you can hit save and that will create the brand for you. Now that our brand is set up, we can start sending out emails and campaigns. On the dashboard of the brand, you'll notice that there are a few uh, options here. You have template section, you have all the subscriber and list section, housekeeping, blacklist, and the report section. The first thing you'll probably want to do when you start up Sendy is migrate your lists from another uh, system that you're using. So what you can do is if you click on all lists and you create a new list, call it whatever you want. I'll just call it subscribers. And I spelt that wrong. So we'll just go back and uh, edit that and make sure it's spelled correctly. Okay. And uh, if you then click into the list, you have the ability to add subscribers, delete subscribers and do a mass unsubscribe as well as export but we want to add subscribers. So if you click on add subscribers, you have the ability to manually enter subscribers through here in this type of format. So if you did say this, uh, hang on, it's uh, yeah. So the, the name, the full name and separated by a comma and then the email address, you could do add and that would add the person to the list. However, you may have a list that requires more than just a name and an email. And that's where custom fields come in. So if you have a look at custom fields up here, you'll notice that name and email are there by default. So you can't edit or delete them, but you can add extra custom fields. So let's just say we want to have a last name as well or a surname. The type is text. And let's just say we wanted to have birthday as well. So we'll just do birthday and we'll make that a date and we'll add that as well. Okay, so we'll go back to our list now and we'll click into subscribers and we'll click on add subscribers. Now, when you want to add subscribers with custom fields, unfortunately, you can't do it the manual way. You need to, uh, sorry, uh, you can't type it into this text area here. You actually have to import it with a CSV file. So if you're using another system right now, chances are that you can get an export of those users through an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file. And what you need to do is then create another CS CSV file that will uh, match the format that Sendy needs to receive so that it can upload those subscribers. So I'm going to go into uh, Excel now and uh, create a new blank uh, a CSV document and we're going to create this format so we can upload it. Okay, so we're in Excel now, and as you can see, name, email, surname, and birthday. So what we wanna do is we just want to do name, email, surname, and birthday. You have to make sure the spelling is correct. And then you can just add some uh, information in here. So let, well, obviously you're gonna copy this from the other spreadsheet that you got from your other system, but I'm just gonna put in some uh, test names. So we'll just do uh, Joe Blogs, um, Bob Smith, um, oh geez, I don't know. Um, I'll just put my name as well. I'll put something else. Okay, so we have four people, but you'll notice that we don't want the full name to be there. So let's remove the full name and we'll actually put 
the f the surname uh, the the first name in the name column and the surname in the surname column. Because when you send an email to people, you don't really want to say, you know, hi, Bob Smith. You want to say, hi, Bob. Um, so that's why it's good to separate the first name and the surname. Um, it kind of personalizes the email a bit more. You'll notice that the name and the surname aren't columns next to each other. And that's purely because we need to match this. Okay, so we've got that. I'm just going to do uh, some emails. Obviously, if you use the same email for the same subscriber, Sendy won't do both. It will only upload one. And then comes the birthday column. And this is uh, the one where you need to be a bit careful with because you can't just put it in in any format you want. Sendy uses PHP and PHP only accepts a certain type of date. Now, the date I would recommend is to use the MySQL date format, which would be, uh, let's just do some dates here. The year, uh, hyphen, the month, and then the day, okay? So you'll probably notice that uh, Excel has actually changed it to the format. So you need to go into the column settings and go to format cells, and you have to just change it to text, all right? And then do it again, because that's uh, going to cause problems when you're sending it over to Sendy if it goes in that format. So let's try it again. Any single digit days or months would just have zero in front of it. So zero five instead of five, for example. I'm just going to copy that. And great, that should work. So let's go and we'll save that onto our desktop. and make sure you save it as a CSV file. So I'm gonna save it as MS-DOS CSV. I'm gonna call it subscribers. I'll just get out of it. And then we're just gonna go and choose the file, subscribers, and import it. And there you go. Sendy has uh, imported those four subscribers. You'll notice the name is just the first name. The emails are there and if you actually click into the person you'll notice then it has the custom fields the surname and the birthday and the birthday has come over correctly now that we have these subscribers we can then uh, use the merge tags in the newsletter to be able to customize the newsletter email to that particular person before we go ahead and we start sending out emails and creating templates, we also need to set up a couple of other things. Uh, they are called cron jobs and it's what Sendy uses to be able to process and send out emails without you needing to have your screen open when you're sending the email. So if we go back to add subscribers, you'll notice down here, if your CSV is huge, your server will constantly time out set up a cron job by setting up a cron job your csv will continue to import without you your window needing to be open so this is one cron job we need to set up if we click on set up a cron job it will tell us what we need to actually put there so what we need to do to set up a cron job especially if you're using cpanel is you need to log back into your cpanel and add this in as a cron job so let's do it so I'm back on my cPanel now and I'm just going to log in. And you'll notice if you do a search up here and just type in cron, you'll find uh, cron jobs. And if you don't have this, you need to ask your host to give you access to it. So click into cron jobs. And the first thing you want to do is you want to go back into your Sendy and you want to grab this code. So just copy it. And then you want to if you have a look at this, this is this means that it's going to be once every minute. So once per minute. And paste the command in there. So we'll click on add new con cron job. And as you can see, the cron job is added in. And that means every single minute your server is going to run this command, which is a sendy command, which is for importing the CSV. Okay, so that's one cron job we need to set up. We also need to set up a couple of other ones. 
uh, if we go back into our subscriber lists and we click on autoresponders, you'll notice that you can't do anything with autoresponders yet until you set up the cron job for that as well. So let's grab that command, go back into our cron. You'll notice it's the same time interv interval as the previous one. So let's just do once per minute, paste the command in there and add new cron job. We'll click OK and then we'll go back into autoresponders. Now you'll notice that it still asks you for that code because what it does, it will, ch it will check in a minute if the cron job is functioning properly. And if it is, then we can go into autoresponders. And why would you use autoresponders? Well, in our subscriber list, we had our birthday, uh, the birth date of our users in there, which can be handy if we want to send out an email on someone's birthday. So let's just wait for the autoresponder to be recognized. Okay, it's been about a minute now, so I'm just gonna refresh the page and then click on autoresponders. And as you can see, it is working now. So autoresponders allow you to create uh, a drip campaign, so e a sequence of emails that send. I'm not gonna be able to take you through every feature of Sendy because there's just so many features. However, however, just a, a basic uh, uh, rundown of what, what the autoresponder can do. You can send annually, as I said, with the birthday. So let's say, for example, if we clicked on that and we created a um, birthday alert, we'll click on save and you'll notice that it will actually send an email. Uh, you can set a before date, an after date, or on their birthday, and you can create an email which will send to each user on their birthday. In case you're you know, you're a business that offers, like say you're a cafe or a restaurant and you offer a, a discount on someone's birthday, you can easily do that. So that's the uh, cron job set up for autoresponders. So they'll, they'll run every minute and check through your whole, list, uh, your whole list if someone's birthday is that day and then send an email out on that day. Okay, let's go and create a uh, new campaign and we'll just call it test. As you can see, the name and the email are pre-filled here and we haven't got anything in the HTML editor yet. So this is your actual newsletter here, but I'm just gonna put test there for now and we'll hit save and next. You'll notice Sendy takes a couple of seconds when you click on save and next because I assume that it's connecting to Amazon or doing something behind the scenes that is pretty resource intensive. So once that loads, you'll notice that it will allow you to send a test email. It will also let you know how many sends you, can, uh, you have left in that specific day. But if you go further down, you'll notice that the cron job needs to be set up for emails as well. And that's obviously because when you send out a newsletter, you might be sending it out to 20, 30,000 people. You don't want to have to rely on your browser being open. So once you click send, you can close your browser, can go do whatever you want to do, and it will be doing it behind the scenes on the server. So let's set up the cron. It tells us what it needs to do. So let's just copy that command, go back into cPanel. You'll notice here that it's every five minutes though. So let's go here and choose five minutes and then paste that code in there and add the cron job. Okay, great. So what we'll do is we'll wait five minutes and then when we refresh this, you should notice that this uh, that set up a cron job message will go away. Okay, so I'm just refreshing the page now to see if the cron job has been set up properly. Uh, again, it's taking a bit longer to load, but if you go down, you'll notice that the cron job message is no longer there, which means the cron job works. So let's just try and do a test email. If you click on test send this newsletter, uh, the email should come through relatively quickly. So yep, yeah, I've just received it here on my end, as you can see there. Um, then when you want to actually send your emails out, you can just click on the subscriber list and you can hit send a newsletter now. Okay, so fantastic news. Uh, it's probably been nearly 20 hours now since we applied for the limit increase. Um, however, I did receive an email just now, which is from Amazon letting me know that my limit has been increased to 50,000 messages per day. So if we go into the Sendy installation now and we go to uh, just the dashboard by clicking on the logo up here, you'll notice now our daily quota is 50,000, which is pretty awesome. Obviously, if your subscriber list is much bigger than 50,000, you might want to ask for a daily limit of a million or 10 million. 
Who knows? Whether Amazon allow that um, or accept that will be a different story, but it's worked for this. So now what we can do is we can go into our campaign, we can hit save and next, and we can go and send the email through um, and our cron job will look after everything. I'm not gonna be able to send out the emails because uh, I don't have a huge subscriber list and I wouldn't want to send out a test email to a lot of people. But right now, the way everything is set up on Sendy, it is ready to work. So now that Sendy is ready to start sending emails on a mass scale, you obviously want to send out a newsletter. You need to design a newsletter and you need to send it out to your subscribers. The only real problem with Sendy, and this is one of its uh, negatives, is that it doesn't have a very intuitive drag and drop user interface. It's not very easy to edit an email in Sendy and uh, design it and send it. Um, if you've had experience with sending out emails before, Emails can be really painful. The design and the coding of emails needs to be done in quite an old way. Um, and uh, people see emails on so many different devices that you need to be able to do it in a way that all those devices will kind of show it in the same sort of way. So with that being said, it's probably not the best idea to code an email yourself. However, there is a workaround. As you know, MailChimp, Campaign Monitor, and all of those services, they have their own drag and drop editors, and they've kind of mastered that. What you can do, uh, this is just, uh, just a tip. You can use their drag and drop editors on a free account, and then you can export the newsletter that you create into HTML and then bring it into Sendy. So let's try that. I'm gonna use MailChimp for an example, but you can use other services as well. So if you go into Google and you search for HTML responsive uh, email editors, uh, you should see there's quite a few there. You've got BeFree, Strippo, Chameleon, all those sort of things. BeFree might, uh, uh, is one example that uh, you have a free account there and you might be able to use some pre-made templates and you can use a drag and drop interface and all that sort of stuff. So you might want to use that. And once you create the template, you can export it to HTML. When you get the HTML code, you then go into Sendy, you go into the source here and you paste the HTML into there. To make it even easier though, we're going to go to MailChimp and we're going to use the functionality of MailChimp to create our newsletter and then we're gonna copy it out of MailChimp and put it into Sendy. So to do that, just log into your MailChimp account. What you need to do in MailChimp, you just need to click on templates and then just create a template there. So you can use whatever you want in the free templates. Um, I'm going to just say use this template here, the basic one. And I'm not gonna do any editing or anything like that because it will just take too much time. So I'm just going to, uh, let's just pretend that we edited this newsletter and everything's looking how we want it to. What you can do is you can go to uh, save and exit and we'll just call it whatever we want. We'll just call it test. And now that test is there, you can go onto the edit button, click the drop down, and click on export as HTML and then click export template. So then it's gonna, show it in an HTML file. So it's just loaded up in an HTML file. So what you can do is you have to just open that HTML file in, you can open it up in Notepad, or if you open it up in your browser, just go into, if you're in Chrome, go into right click on the page and then go to view page source and then copy all of this code here. Okay, so just do control A and then control C to, to copy it. And then once you've got the HTML code, go into Sendy and paste it. And if you get out of source now, you'll notice that everything is lined up how it needs to look. Uh, and this is just a shortcut. The only downside to using the MailChimp uh, as your editor would be that uh, MailChimp brings over some stuff. So you need to remove some of the stuff that gets added here. As you can see, there's a couple of links here as well, like unsubscribe and stuff. And I'll show you how to replace that with Sendy's version of unsubscribe. So we'll just remove this if rewards. We'll also take away this company and current year. So what you can do is you can go down here and they've got all these little personalization tags. So you can do uh, the year. So the year would be that code there. So just paste that. 
and then you put your company name. So I'm just gonna put just a digital and I'm just gonna remove this text as well here. And you can change this text to say whatever you'd like, but um, I'm just gonna take away, you can update your preferences and just remove all of that. And then we want to use the unsubscribe link on our template. So what you can do is add this through HTML. So copy this. Go to source again, and we want to go down to the copyright. So easiest way to do it would be uh, doing a search. So control F, then copyright. And as you can see, copyright is there. So let's look for want to change your received emails. Yep, that's where we want it. So we'll just go under this break, HTML break, paste, and you can just change it. So unsubscribe to this, uh, to our list or something like that, whatever you'd like to do change back to source and you'll notice now there's unsubscribe to our list and that's actually a sendy link that will automatically go to sendy to unsubscribe the person you can obviously change these links however you want by double clicking on them and you can change where they go uh, but i would probably do all the editing in mailchimp as opposed to in uh, sendy so do all the design related stuff all the links and all that stuff and then when you bring it over here you just need to make sure that you get rid of all the the MailChimp tags and stuff like that. There's also view this email in your browser. So you can actually change it with this, with web version. So just go and replace that with web version there. Don't worry about it, it's just a short tag. It will automatically be replaced when you send the email. The last thing with a MailChimp uh, email is that they do have some uh, hidden codes. So let's save this and send a test to myself and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so I'll send a test now to myself for this email and I'll show you what the actual subject looks like. So I'll go to my email and you'll notice here straight away, we have MC preview text. So that's what's coming up in the email. Um, you don't want that MC preview text to be there. You'll also notice that the link here is actually showing just a full link. We want it to say view the web version. So we just wanna change that as well. Okay, so let's go back to our newsletter and with web version, we want to change it. We want to make it HTML. So let's copy that and then go back to our source and do a search for web version because that's what the short code is, as you can see there and change this and you can leave it like that. Okay, so now it's view web version. Uh, the other thing is we need to remove that MC preview text thing. So we just need to go source here. First thing is title. Let's remove title. So you can see MC subject. So maybe just name it the same thing as your actual email, the, the, the subject possibly. And then look for MC preview text and you can see it is here. So what you wanna do is you wanna change this to whatever you want. So this is a test, okay? And I'm gonna remove these two tags, MC preview text and MC preview. Uh, which one was it? Yeah, so this one and this one. Okay, and we'll go back and let's save and next again. Okay, and we're gonna try and send the newsletter once again. You'll notice now this new test comes up with this as a test. Um, so if you click into it now, everything is working. If you click on the web version, it takes you to the actual web version on your Sendy installation. If you click on the unsubscribe, it tells you that the unsubscribe tag is working. So because this was a test, it's not gonna really unsubscribe you. And that's it. So we have successfully set up Sendy on our web hosting service. We have applied with Amazon Web Services for 50,000 emails per day, which has been successful. It took Amazon about 20 hours to respond, which is fine, I guess. Um, and we have used MailChimp's drag and drop system to then transport the email over to Sendy and send it. There are probably other things that I can teach you about on Sendy, but there's just not enough time in the day. And I think all you can do is go onto Sendy and try it out and get used to it yourself. And you'll just see how powerful it is. And then you can just start saving money. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'll be very, very happy to help you. Thank you.